a couple of housekeeping reminders. All lines have been muted upon entry so we don't get any background noise. Please use the chat and the question and answer feature. I will be monitoring the chat closely. And questions will be answered during the section at the end of the program. Next slide, please. The agenda today, first we're gonna review the ride view demo. We're also gonna review the multi-loading update, the bus pass update, the best practices in case of inclement weather, holiday schedule, grievance filing and the grievance process, as well as contact information, call center, med necessity, and mass email. And I think, Joseph, you're going to take it from there. Fabulous. Thank you for the introduction as well, Julia. Um, as Julia has said, my name is Joseph. I am the Strategic Healthcare Services Manager over at VEO. Uh, I'm happy all of you could join me today. So to start, just giving a few goals for our presentation today. So one major goal, um, we want to provide practical best practices for you all to be able to put into place for your members. So any tips or any kind of clarity we can add with this presentation is really the goal, um, just so you have a full understanding of our NEMT process and how we can make it work best for members. In addition to that, we really want to foment strong relationships between ourselves and you as facilities um, and also build, bridge any policy or procedure gaps that currently exist. So as Julia said, um, to start, I will do a little RideView demo. Um, if you weren't aware, RideView is our, our portal to be able to track, um, book, as well as cancel any trips that you have scheduled through us at VAO. Um, the RideView portal does provide real-time information, um, including contact information, as well as an ETA for the trips that your members have going to your facility. Um, currently, we, we have 80 to 85 percent of our providers fully GPS integrated within our RideView portal, so even greater tracking is available within that. I'll kind of, I'll show that feature once we're within the RideView portal. I'm going to do that just momentarily after this slide, um, but it is our goal by the end of the year to have full integration of all trips being GPS tracked. So that's very exciting for us, and we're very hopeful for that. Um, in addition, like I said, it does grant trip insights to you. You have trip data for any current or historical trips that you have had scheduled at your facilities. Um, really just adds an air of transparency so you're fully able to see what all is going on um, and makes it easier for you all just so you don't spend that time on the, on the phone with a call center agent. You can just look at it right in one portal in one place. Um, it is rather user friendly. Um, it's quite easy to schedule. Um, in fact, we find that it's at least 60% or greater of a time savings by booking your trips through RideView um, rather than calling into our call center. Um, I know you can get caught up with wait times on the call center, but um, when you utilize our RideView software, um, when you do book trips, it could take possibly a minute and a half or two minutes compared to what you'd be dealing with trying to enter that trip within our um, call center and really just cuts down on that time savings for you. Um, additionally, um, you like I said, you are able to book three times faster, roughly, or 60% or greater faster. Um, so it is a real benefit. And now I'm going to close out of this PowerPoint and head on over um, to give you a little demo of our RideView portal. Um, currently, we do have around 265 facilities on board with us in RideView. And here is what our initial landing screen of our RideView portal would look like. Um, as you can see, trips are listed to your facility. This is a fictional environment I'm working in, by the way, just to just make that clear. Um, no real patient data is here. Gerald is our fictional friend for the day. So as you can see here, trips in our RideView portal are listed chronologically, with the most current being at the top of the list. And then descending down, you'll see future trips coming up. If you'll notice, this trip here is rather grayed out in comparison to the kind of brighter trips. All that represents is a canceled trip to your facility. Um, you will get updates real time, like we said earlier. Um, one of these is for cancels. Um, this also updates with information such as 
trip in progress, um, en route to pick up member, trip completed. It really gives you full transparency into where exactly the ride is and what is the status of that ride. However, if you do have a bunch of canceled trips, now we only have two in our list, it may get a bit tedious to be able to see what are the active trips. You really don't want to load in the, the canceled trips as well. We do have filtering options as well. Um, for this example, I, you, there are various options you're able to filter by, but I am just going to show you because I think it is most common probably of a desire to be able to filter out the canceled trips. All you do is come to this advanced options drop down menu in our ride view. You can unclick the canceled trips, you search it, and now we just have our current trips listed down below. Um, once we come within here, you do see more trip information as you saw with the canceled trip. Um, I had touched on this earlier that we have GPS integration with a large percent of our providers, but it is the end of the year goal to have all our providers fully GPS integrated. Um, and that would show up in this map area here. In that area, you would see real time tracking. So a little car um, kind of progressing along the route of the member. So you really do have full transparency there. In addition to that, there are the pertinent trip details that are listed within this. So you'll see here, um, this is our booked as a round trip for Gerald. Um, Gerald has repeating trips Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's also represented as a repeating trip by this square of arrows up here. So we have our, our trip A and trip B details along with the appropriate address for pickup and drop off, as well as pickup and drop off on the way home and the appropriate pickup and return time for that member. In addition, we do have the member's number listed within here and the driver info here in our in our training environment, Gerald is listed as a public transit member. Um, but if you were to have a typical cab or an ambulatory mode of transportation, a wheelchair car or a bariatric wheelchair car, you would get real time driver info populated as soon as of, as it is available here. Um, to start that may be more general, such as X company has confirmed this trip and they will be taking it for that member. Um, but when it does get closer to pickup time, it would populate with even more specific information, um, even down to the make or model of the car. So that can definitely be valuable. You'll know exactly what to look out for, who is coming to pick up that member, and just real transparency. In addition to that, um, you do have the ability to cancel out trips, um, whether it be canceling on the day or canceling that member's blanket if they're no longer going to that facility you have trips booked for. And this book again feature here, um, you can create an expedited trip. So essentially, there's a longer trip booking process. We'll have to enter all the information of the trip that's listed in here. If you do wish to book the same trip and possibly just on a different date, you can come into this book again feature. Um, from there, it will ask you the new date for the appointment and then the trip is fully booked. Um, I will be able to go into more depth if you do have a desire to do a training with us um, to get ride view on your facility, or maybe you already have a ride view agreement at your facility. Um, there's no cost associated with ride view. So if you do have interest, um, I'll give our, my team's contact information again at the end of the presentation, but reach out to us at ctfacility at veo.com and we can get that process started for you. Um, from there, if we have a user agreement on file, we would just move to about a 40 minute Zoom training just to give you a full idea of how to use our software and answer any questions you may have. Um, one last feature I do want to touch on, I'm not going to give a full demo today, I just wanted to give you all a brief glimpse into our portal, um, is the need help feature, which is very useful. Um, this can come in handy if you forget how to do a certain feature. Um, you select what you forgot how to do. So, for example, we'll say book a trip. We come in and our walk me tool will take you step by step, um, just letting you know exactly what you have to fill out so you don't miss anything. So here it says request trip. And then so on, it will continue to assist you throughout the process in case you forget how to do something or you just want to be extra careful making sure you're doing it all correctly. Now I'm going to return back to our home screen. Um, if you're in our ride view so software, if you hit the ride view icon, you will be returned to the home screen at any time. And then one more thing I want you to be aware of, um, 
In addition to the need help, if you come in here, there's also a ability to submit a request to us. From there, you'd select Connecticut as your appropriate state. Um, and then there's various abilities you have here to be able to submit certain things to us, whether it be a trip rescue, a grievance, um, ride view support, updating member eligibility, um, whatever it may be. If it's easier than calling in, you can submit a request here. Uh, but you can also use the support email that I'll provide for my team at the end of the presentation, as I'd said. So I'm going to leave this area here and we'll get right back into our slideshow. So this is a quick updating on multi loading throughout the state of Connecticut. Um, this is a bit of an older update. This came out a couple months ago from DSS. Um, but VEO, us, DSS's MT broker will resume multi-loading, multi-loading unrelated passengers. Um, immunocompromised members are exempt from multi-loading, but they would have to provide necessary documentation to VEO um, just so that those trips are appropriately documented and it states that they are immunocompromised on their profile. Um, and if you do want these forms, they can be found at ct.ridewithveo.com. Um, along with that update, um, and NMT services will continue to follow CDC guidelines, um, as well as the Connecticut Department of Health guidelines and any other appropriate, other appropriate agencies guidelines, such as wearing face masks, um, fresh air circulation, as well as the maintenance of our current vehicle cleaning protocols that are in place. Lastly, um, this was along with the bulletin, but it's a good reminder. Um, DSS does encourage healthcare providers to continue communicating changes in dates, um, as well as times to VAO at their earliest convenience. Um, it really is a help. It, if, if you're aware that something needs to be canceled out or there needs to be a change made, um, as soon as you can get that to us as possible, it's very helpful for our network. Um, just so we're sending out, not sending out any trips that don't need to go out, um, making sure that it really does have the full capabilities for members to be able to have the best transportation experience possible. Um, another policy update is a bus pass update. Um, this came out a little while ago and was went into effect on April 1st. Um, so it was an emergency legislation that Governor, Governor Lamont had signed and starting April 1st through June 30th, CT Transit Local um, Express and CT Fast Track routes will offer fare free transportation options for customers. Um, just to be aware, if you do have any bus pass members um, in this time period, bus passes are free within the state of Connecticut and that will end on June 30th. Um, Additionally, any members that are currently using our CT Transit or Smart Card should be advised that they are permitted to travel for free. Um, and that we will not, not be sending out bus passes during the affected month. So April through June, we will not be sending it out just because it will be free. Um, I do have linked in the presentation more information on the legislation. Now we'll get into touching on some best practices um, and getting into our quality assurance process and how it all works. So here are a few of the topics we'll be covering, uh, including inclement weather, holiday schedules, grievance filing, as well as our grievance process and exactly what goes into it. So for inclement weather and holiday schedules, um, for inclement weather, Dialysis does qualify as an urgent trip reason. So dialysis trips should not be canceled out um, unless totally necessary, um, if there's no providers at all available. But we really do prioritize dialysis on these dates with inclement weather, making sure that members are able to get to their appointments because we understand how very important that is. Um, if there are any facility shift changes or closures that come up due to inclement weather, um, we do ask that you communicate with us directly at ctfacility at um, And that's just so we're able to cancel out the appropriate trips or make the appropriate changes to make sure everything goes smoothly for all of our members. Um, similarly, um, if you do have holiday schedule changes or cancellations due to a certain holiday, you can communicate those with us at ctfacility at veo.com as well. So now we're going to get into the complaint investigation process. Oh, excuse me. So into the complaint investigation process. 
So once a complaint's been submitted to us, um, we will acknowledge that complaint within five business days, which, which will include a confirmation that the complaint was filed, um, as well as a general briefing on our investigation procedures. Once that complaint has been filed, our QA team will reach out to all involved parties, um, the mother, member, healthcare provider, if applicable, the transportation provider, and specifically, possibly the driver that was on that trip to receive more information, really making sure that we're collecting the full story of what transpired. Um, additionally, our team reviews phone calls and all internal trip records, along with the documentation provided by transportation providers and or drivers. Um, and that's how we will decide from all of those various data sources if a complaint would be substantiated or not. Lastly, um, transportation providers are required um, to maintain a certain level of, of performance with us. So that level is they need a validated grievance rate of 0.1%, which equates to 0.1 or one out of every 100 trips. Um, and any failure for a transportation provider to meet this requirement of a 0.1% grievance rate will result in a few different things depending on exactly how bad those numbers look. Um, but that could result in a payment penalty, a reduction or suspension of trips, or if it comes to it, a termination from our transportation provider network. Um. Now, getting into a bit more of the grievance process, um, as I said earlier, we do really hold our providers accountable with their key performance indicators. Um, if they don't meet those, we do put them on a corrective action plan. Um, to give you a general idea, at first, that would be a verbal warning. Um, beyond that, a corrective action plan would be introduced to this provider, um, which, like I discussed earlier, could be a variety of different penalties, whether it be a 5% percent financial payout penalty um, or just a reduction in overall trips to make sure they are able to meet that volume of trips that they are accepting from us. Um, and if a prior does not inter does not address these issues that we bring to them um, within the, the timeline that we do outline in our corrective action plan, um, that's when a permanent rate reduction would come in. And if those issues persist, possible termination from our network. Um, just to give you a general idea of our corrective action plan um, and how many providers are typically on it, there are roughly 15 to 20 provi providers placed on a corrective action plan per month at VAO um, due to not meeting their key performance indicators. This can vary from month to month, but that's generally about where the number would be. Um, 24 providers in 2021 were penalized for repeatedly failing to meet their performance requirements. Um, and we do conduct weekly meetings with these providers um, really to address these key performance indicators, um, seeing what all is causing these issues where they have a decline in these key performance indicators and trying to work with them as best as possible so they're able to provide the best possible transportation to members. Um, lastly, I just wanted to touch on this. Um, all tra transportation providers are mandated to go through the CTAA um, Passenger Assistance Safety and Sensitivity Class, PASS. Um, and this certification course is what makes them eligible to drive for us at Bayo. Here, I just wanted to list some of the network improvements that we have made over the past year. If you'll see here, um, it, is a, it is a pretty extensive list. This is something we're regularly working on. Um, we do expect coming out of the pandemic to see some increase in trip volume. Um, so we, re we really are scouring the DOT website and the DOT directory daily to make sure we're able to bring on as many providers as possible. Um, but this just gives you an idea of some of those that we brought on in the past year, as well as a couple that will be activated. Actually, two of those today. So top-notch transportation um, and predestination hand handicapped and el elderly transportation will be enabled today. Um, and this variety of providers does represent a wide range throughout the state um, areas like I'll, I'll get, give a quick idea for you um, with each provider. So quiet corners, Wyndham County, relax ride would be for Farmington, Bristol, New Britain, um, that general area. There's a whole list of other towns they service as well um, for absolute Torrington, Danbury, Bethel, New Fairfield. 
Um, and that goes on throughout all these providers. They cover a wide range throughout our state. So now I wanna get into some of the channels of communication and how to best communicate with us. Um, so we do send out mass email communications whenever we have large system updates, um, if there are operational changes, any updates that we have to ride view, um, as well as ahead of holidays and inclement weather events, we try to get, get out those communications just so we can, can see if you do have schedule changes, kind of remind you to get those into us. Um, if you're not currently subscribed, I do recommend if, if you'd like to reach out to us again at ctfacility at veo.com. Um, from there, once you enter, the, give us those following details, you would be added to our mass mailing list. Um, and at least roughly one email in a month typically is more, but I want to keep it at least one just to stay in touch and get out any regular updates that we do have. Into our medical necessity forms. Um, so you do have the ability to either send it via an encrypted email um, or fax. However, I, out of my personal experience and what I've saw, seen, would highly recommend emailing rather than faxing. The reason for that is the processing time is typically much quicker um, if you are able to email rather than fax. In addition to that, with the email, you would get confirmation from our clinical coordinator that, in fact, the form has been processed um, and you do now have the ability to book any appropriate trips for that member that you set up with the NEMT form. Um, we give a general time of 10 days for processing of NEMT forms. Generally, that is a quicker time frame, a quicker turnaround. Um, I have hyperlinked in here our website for the, our CT forms. There you can find a medical necessity um, as well as a few other applicable forms that you may need. Um, and we can try to expedite any urgent requests. Um, typically, if you email it, it wouldn't need to be expedited. It's a quick turnaround time. But we absolutely can look into those if you have something that's very urgent and we want to get out right away. Um, but we can't guarantee the approval time behind that. There are a couple of avenues if you wish to file a grievance. Um, I know we had touched on the grievance process earlier and exactly what all goes into it. Um, you can reach us by calling 855-478-7350. Um, that's just our normal call center number. If you do not enter the prompt nine, after the initial prompt, you will be put on to esca our escalations team. Um, the escalations unit does consist of more experienced agents. So they've been around with VAO for a while. They have a very deep understanding of our processes. Um, and they'll be able to for, file that grievance for you or possibly help you out with any issues that you're currently experiencing. In addition to that, um, you can send grievances to my team at ctfacility.veo.com um, or on the website. I had showed you the, the um, user form that you're able to submit off of RideView. That's the same form highlighted here in the hyperlink. Um, you're able to access our grievance filing from there as well as a few other things like the trip rescue. So as I, as I said earlier, I give you my team's contact information. I know I've said it a few times already, but I really do want you to be able to work with us. Um, if you have any repeat issues um, or, or concerns that you have for your facility, um, if you want to file a grievance for a driver's late pickup, driver noncompliance, or some other issue, um, if you do have any questions about our policies or requirements, or if you just want to update us on any um, important operational updates that may be like scheduling, as we had touched on earlier, or certain closures, um, you can reach out to us that way as well. And lastly, anything RideView related, um, feel free to email us at ctfacility.veo.com. Um, from there, we could kind of see if your facility is currently active with us in a user agreement. Um, if they are, great. We can just set up a training roughly 40 minutes on Zoom, um, and then we'd get you those activation emails so you can utilize your RideView account shortly thereafter. Um, if you do need a contract or agreement to be signed with us, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's no cost associated with RideView. Um, we'll provide you with that form so you're able to fill it out. Once you do get that back to us, the process will be the same. Um, we would go in, 
see what works best for your availability and if we can facilitate that for you, um, get a training scheduled and get you onto RideView. Um, really, we want, we want to encourage facilities as much as possible to utilize RideView. Um, the time savings aspect is a, is a huge benefit, as well as just the ability to fully see where the trips are and not get clogged down and calling into the call center multiple times a day to see where is this member's trip. Um, did I remember to book this certain member's trip? All of those questions would be answered by RideView and just giving you fuller accessibility. And that is all I have for you all today. Um, I'd like to open it up to any questions that you may have. Do we get any questions in the chat, Julia? We did. We did get a question and it says, when and how are we able to use RideView to assist members? Great question. So um, as I mentioned, the process would be you just reach out to my team. Um, if you don't have a user agreement already with us, we would send that out to you. Once you get that back in, we'd set up a Zoom training and you can book essentially all of the rides that you'd like. The only real stipulation that there is is if it is a short notice trip, so less than 48 business hours, that would still be a trip that you'd have to call in through our call center. So all of your other trips you'd be able to book for your members, just those short notice trips you would have to call in. Um, and the only tech requirement for our RideView portal, it's browser based, so there's no real heavy tech requirements, is the ability to utilize Google Chrome on your work computer. Um, it was built out for Google Chrome, so this is most efficient and will not work well with other browsers. Have any others out, out there, Julia? I think that's it. Somebody asked if um, the presentation will be emailed to participants, and the answer is yes. It is being recorded and will be sent to participants. Yeah, absolutely. That's all. No other questions at all? I'll give a moment if anyone does come up with anything or just even like a general question at all. More than happy to answer. I chat up. Do we have anything new coming in, all, Julia? Okay, well, if there's no more questions, I really do appreciate you for joining us. Um, as Julia had said, she will email this slide deck so you'll have access, um, be able to get into some of those hyperlinks that I have put into the presentation just for the ease of your access. Um, if you do have any questions, concerns, please do reach out to my team or interest in RideView, um, ctfacility at veo.com. We do work 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. So in those time frames, it's myself, um, as well as my three team members that I work with on that mailbox during that time. So we're very quick to get back if you do have anything that you need assistance with. Okay, you have a new member that needs rides to Yale next week. Okay, so the first step there, Linda, would be getting in the medical necessity form. Um, and like I'd said earlier, I would recommend if you're just initially setting up to email that form, the processing time. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that second chat. Did you see that, Julia, what, what our follow up was? Enough time for May 4th. Oh, is there enough time for May 4th to get? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's a reasonable time period, Linda. Um, I would just recommend, like I said, email. It's for a kidney transplant. I would recommend emailing that NEMT form rather than faxing it. So if you have a chance today um, going, going on in, um, let us know that is an urgent request. Email it over. Um, did you already email that over, Linda?
did you already email that over, Linda? Sorry, I didn't see that. I didn't see you reply to that. Yes, you did. Okay. Well, well, I can do then. Um, did you email it from your? Is your email associated with your name? So it would be Linda Silverberg. Okay. What I can do is um, shortly after this meeting, um, I'll go in to check to see if I if I can find that form that you emailed. Um, I'll search your name to see. Um, but if you don't hear back from me, do reach out to my team. Like I said, CT. Okay, Virginia Pogana. All right, let's let's keep PHI off the screen. We are we are recording currently. Um, but um, what I'll do then is I'll, I'll go in there see if I can find it. Um, just email email us at ctfacility at vo .com to let us know on that request. Um, we'll go in, we'll check that for you, and if it hasn't been processed, we can absolutely expedite it with our clinical coordinator team. Are there any other questions I could answer for any of you all? After I do it. After approved, do I call in a ride for it? Yeah, absolutely. Once you get that approval approval back, you can feel free to call in that ride. Um, and there shouldn't be any issue at all once that NEMT form is processed. We also received a question about how will we know when a patient's medical necessity form is about to be due? That's an excellent question. Um, for that, you can generally know medical necessity forms are good for a full calendar year. Um, so if you were to put one in for today, it would be April 27th of 2023 would be when that form expires. Um, if you don't have that information handy to you, my team can help you with that. That's something very easy for us to look at. We can go into the members file, um, pull that up and see if that override is in place. And if not, we can let you know. Um, or you can call into the call center. I, I'd recommend emailing my team. It might just be a little easier for you. It's not a huge ask on our end to be able to go in there and find that information for you. So if you are curious, feel free to reach out to us with that. It's, it's an easy process for us. Yeah, of course, Linda. Okay. Anyone else have any questions I can answer? All right. Well, thank you all again for joining myself and Julia. Um, we really do appreciate it. And I hope that we were able to grant you a bit more transparency into our NEMT process and just what is the best route to do certain things. Um, I do recommend if you're interested reaching out to us about RideView. I think even if you still utilize the phone phone call center to make those trips, it is very, very useful for even just tracking or canceling if you don't want to book the rides yourself. Um, so thank you again for joining me. Uh, feel free to reach out to myself or my team with any questions that you may come up with or any concerns that you have, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day.